go into the three biggest red flags, in my opinion, about potential Reiki teachers. And this is obviously not a video to criticize anybody. I'm not mentioning anybody by names or anything like that, obviously. It's more of a video to you if you are interested in working with somebody and trying to find you know, a potential teacher or somebody to work with, I would re these are my things that I would most quickly or directly look for if they pop up in a teacher to try to get me to understand if I'm gonna work with this individual, right? And so the first thing that I'm always leery about when it comes to a teacher is if they're making proclamations or claims that they have discovered something new or downloaded it or channeled it or had it divinely inspired. And then further, that thing that they have just received is way more powerful, right? Especially when we're in the Reiki world, we're talking about the energy of all things. So it's literally not possible to discover something new. We can interpret a practice, right? We can discuss things differently. We can make deeper understandings into potentially the roots of Reiki. But what I mean by not being able to discover something new is we can't connect stronger to the energy of all things via a new practice because that's all in the mind. That's all framed in belief, right? You might believe that you can connect into the energy stronger via a different practice. That's fine. And maybe that'll work. Maybe there will be uh, something that's presented in that that will help you to believe that you've made a deeper connection. But belief always ends. It's always a dead end, right? And such claims that it's new or that the, I hear this quite often as well, that the energy of Reiki is always shifting and evolving and moving and becoming different and so on. It's the energy of all things. The minds of people can be shifting and moving and evolving and so on. Yes, that's what can be changing. The energy of the universe is neutral by definition, right? It has to be. Any neutrality, excuse me, any lack of neutrality is simply evaporated or expanded across all things until it finds equilibrium yet again. It's a basic tenet of the universe and, and a tenet of all things, right? Resistance will be worked through until there's neutrality. And so that's what I kind of mean here by this, by it not being possible to find something that is going to be more powerful because we're moving to neutrality, hopefully, anyway, right? We're trying to understand how to make our mind and our body neutral. So if it's immediately being framed by more powerful, well, how can you be more powerful than neutral? It doesn't make sense, right? It breaks down automatically. And so more powerful has to be framed in the ideas of belief and comparison. So anytime that I hear these, I'm immediately suspicious because, you know, again, it's hard to argue that that course is not going to be from the belief of the teacher, right? Reiki is working to cultivate stillness inside, right? And so stillness is neutral. So, you know, again, and we're going to hear this all the time, every new iteration of Reiki, and there's 60, 70 different branches, probably even more than that now, each one of those branches has to believe that they're more powerful or stronger and so on, right? So to me, that's an automatic red flag. So to counter that, seek out a teacher who is teaching from a heart-centered approach, from a neutral approach, right? From an approach of surrendering inside the self right? From a teacher who is urging you to explore and go inward, not with belief, right? Not with desire or attachment, but hopefully with surrendering, neutrality with love and with kindness, right? To me, that really resonates. To me, that it was a game changer in my practice of Reiki. I definitely started off with belief. I definitely started off, and I think as most people do, I think it's totally normal. We want to believe, we want to understand something, we want to feel like we're doing something special, right? There's nothing wrong with that. We're human after all, it's normal, right? At some point, all of those paths will, I think, will be recognized as a dead end. And the only way forward is neutrality inward, 
right? So that's what I would really urge you to look out for, uh, for the first kind of red flag for a teacher. Now, the second red flag, it kind of builds off of that first one. If somebody is proclaiming that they found something to be more powerful, new, you know, stronger, an upgrade for the 22nd, you know, 20th century or whatever, you know, whatever it is, like whatever 2022 upgrade of this energy, that energy, whatever it might be. Does that teacher also have like a cult like personality or following, right? And again, if that's the case, there's most likely going to be, if not guaranteed, there's going to be the entire practice framed within the ego of the teacher. It might not seem like in the Reiki world that this happens, but it does, it happens all the time. And it happens all the time in, my God, all the time in holistic wellness. So in meditation and in, 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 well, obviously in Reiki, but in yoga, in mindfulness, it's just everywhere, the psychedelic space. There's so many self-professed leaders, right? But literally every one of those practices is a journey inward, not a journey to the ego of the teacher. It's a journey into yourself, right? So if there's like this cult-like following, if they are, you know, professing to be divinely channeling this stuff or whatever it might be, you might learn a lot from them. You might gain a lot. You might be able to grow a lot in your own practice, but it's still going to be a dead end. And it's a really precarious path to be going down because there's the pitfall of the cults, there's the pitfall of the of that space. It's very precarious, it's very dangerous, right? And there's ample evidence of this in the wellness space, in the yoga space, right? Pretty much any, they would never be a self-proclaimed guru, but most of the big names in this space don't have a completely clean background because they're in that kind of guru light as well. So, you know, just be leery of that. I'm not saying shy away from it, but be conscious of it. It's, you know, it can be a very long road of that can lead to doubt. It can lead to a lot of potentially negative things. So if you can look for that and try to see it, see the perspective of the person that is trying to convey this. Is it their way or the highway? Is everything that they say correct and everybody else is wrong? It's a journey inward to yourself. It's your journey, right? So the role of a teacher, in my opinion, is to support you on that journey. It's to walk side by side with you, not in front of you, right? You are discovering yourself. And that discovery and that journey inward can be a difficult one. So if you've got somebody leading in front of you, the more difficult that journey becomes for you, the more vulnerable you may become. And that's where things get really precarious. So, you know, again, that's kind of like the second big red flag that I would look out for. And that's not, obviously, that's not in Reiki. It's not as prevalent in Reiki as it is in things like yoga and meditation. It's ripe in those, sadly, it's very ripe in those areas. And I'm sure many of you listening, I'm sure you can think of people in those spaces that, uh, that, that hit those, that tick those boxes that are practicing in that perspective, right? So the other third red flag that, you know, kind of that I look for, I don't know if it's necessarily a red flag more as something that I really try to seek out from a teacher, right? Is the ongoing support. And now before I get into that about the trainings and so on, here's what I would, how I would frame it as a red flag. If the teacher is making really grandiose claims about their own way, their own lineage, their own backgrounds, you know, they're, they're kind of like a cult personality in these types of things. Are they able to substantiate those claims, right? Are they able to substantiate them and support them from a space of neutrality and introspection? And I mean deep introspection. I don't mean surface level. I follow the precepts. You know, I, of course, surrender. It's a practice of, of you know, letting go and so on and so forth. Words and talk can be quite thin, right? It's the actions that speak louder than the words. So see if the person, the teacher that you're considering, you know, working with is living the practice that they teach, right? And if they are living the practice that they teach, then there should be ongoing support and, and you know, guidance 
to you if you have questions as you start to learn and discover more about your own journey inward because that's part of doing our work honestly, right? So if that's not offered and clearly offered, by the way, and I mean that like maybe right on the website or right in the course description or whatever, if it's not written, it's most likely not offered. And to me, that's super important because I hear this all the time. I get students and clients all the time that come to me because their teacher ghosted them. And I've mentioned this in, in many of my videos here it's sad because we could have a so we could have a much more robust Reiki community if it was taught and practiced with more honesty. And I think if we look at some of these red flags here that I'm presenting in this video, and we stay conscious of these as we seek out teachers, then that's a really effective way to make the Reiki world more conscious, more honest, more guided by the precepts, and less guided by belief and by our egos and so on. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps with, you know, your own investigation into a teacher that you're considering working with. Um, maybe it's given you some questions to consider on your own journey. And if you do have any questions, please post them in the comment section below and I will be happy to respond to them. Thank you so much, everybody. As always, be well and in Gosha, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.